All right, so we're going to start. Welcome tonight to the TST Roundtable. I believe it's uh, July 25th, 2018. Tonight we're going to be talking about NVH and some other shop issues. But in case you're wondering, what the hey is NVH? Okay. Noise, vibration, and harshness. Ah, very good. Noise, vibration, and harshness. Now, a lot of times people come in with oddball problems. There's great tools like the Hunter Road Force uh, Balancer when you have a tire problem. But not all the time is it a tire problem. There's driveline issues. There's noise from motors. We're going to show you three different case studies tonight. Um, that'll be on your screen where you won't see us. We're going to share our screen with you with actual screenshots that were taken with Eric and um, yeah. uh, What's this his guy name? over here, Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> I forget. Well, we didn't introduce ourselves, oh, by yeah. the way. Uh, <laughs> I'm G. Truly, the president of TST. And I'm Pierre Respo, the vice president. Uh, John Baer, associate. I'm Eric Tinder, uh, secretary. So we are here tonight to help you guys and uh, type your questions in again. The chat box is to your right. Make sure in the upper right-hand corner of the screen there are bars, you know, like, can you hear me now, Verizon-type bars. The bars up there, if you put your mouse over it, it'll tell you what your Internet connection is. So you should be seeing a clear picture. A lot of times people are on Wi-Fi where there's an issue, okay? So anyway, let's knock this off with... What do you need for NVH? Well, we're going to go first with the Pico setup here. And Eric, uh, take it away. Okay, so I'll start off. I was very interested in, in the NVH. We went to a seminar in uh, Auto Mechanica, me and Pierre. Uh, did, didn't really know much about NVH uh, diagnosis, just besides the seat of your pants. So uh, we decided to attend the class, and we were very awakened, I should say, of, of what there Startled, is. Startled, I think, is a better word. Yeah, of what <laughs> is out there that people aren't aware of to diagnose your uh, a vibration issue. I mean, how many times have you gotten in the car, somebody's got a complaint, and you, uh, you go by the seat of your pants, and you're, like, starting to change this, look at that. Well, there's uh, software that you take a device like Pico NVH, either a single access or a, a three access uh, sensor that you could mount to your, that's what it looks like, it, it mounts to your, any any metal device on your car, most of the time you put in a seat rail, and you uh, you set up your software. You also need a, a interface to talk to the uh, OB2 connector for road speed and and um, and RPM. So like a pass through tool or any any interface that'll talk to your computer and give and you RPM and road speed. An Elm device, right. and you set up your axle ratio. Your tire size, sometimes they'll ask you, depending on your situation, for pulley sizes, if you think you have an engine uh, vibration that's causing it, but you literally go for a ride and you screenshot data, or you watch data on, on the uh, software, and it kind of pinpoints you or, or sets you in a direction uh, of where to go to, to diagnose where to look at, instead of just going by the seat of your pants. And let's say this, you know, when you're doing this, uh, they advise you, the software makers advise you that you shouldn't be driving and looking, you know, for safety reasons. The other thing I'm going to add, I wasn't in the class they were in, I was teaching, but I did get to go into a different class because they ran that multiple times. And when they ran that uh, particular class multiple times, um, I happened to be in it, and I got to tell you, I was pretty amazed. There were a lot of OEs in there. Yes. Yeah, there we had some in our class as well. Yeah. yeah. There were quite a few people. Um, we had Mercedes right and we had... Right. That's who was, yeah, I had Mercedes and GM, I think, was in the class uh, that I was in. So this is not something that just an aftermarket shop is using. I know even the Chevy dealer that we do some uh, work with, where I bought my cars, they actually use it all the time. They have the Pico set up. It's a mandatory tool for them now. Yeah. So it's something good. Uh, again, we see people with cameras on. Please turn your camera off. Turn your camera and your sound off. We're going to need you to turn that guy off who just came on. We don't want to see his living room couch. Okay. There you go. Oh, you did it. Thank you, you so Thank you. much. Very good. One out of four people have paid attention. Thank you. 
So the rest of you that are still with your camera on and all you other great people that are on without that is good. Anyway, let's get back to the NVH, continue on. So this is not only for a wheel noise. This is not yeah, only this is, for... This is for a propeller shaft. You think you have a drive shaft, a driveline issue, an engine vibration that you can't really pinpoint and know what it is. You can actually input your, your size of your pulleys. It'll kind of guide you if it's a power steering pump vibration, if it's an alternator vibration. That's how, that's how precise it kind of and, narrows it down. And it has a microphone, so if you want to put the microphone on what you you know, think is the source and it matches frequencies or on top of each other, bingo, you got it. Yeah, so it takes a, it's a little bit of a learning curve. I've been practicing on a regular basis. Me and Pierre have been spending nights, uh, you know, learning as we go, but it's been pretty, pretty precise. We've, uh, I've had a couple cars, which you'll see soon, that are my own cars, and I know what the problem is already, and I'm just verifying the problem. So how nice would it be to, to get a car in that you don't know what the problem is, you do a repair, and then you test before, and then you get an after. And you could actually screenshot that and give it to your, your customer so he knows what the repair, how, how well that repair went. And even better, how about if you have a good call with no problem and you start baselining stuff so you can you know do what the power story as well. We have a question? Mm -hmm. uh, where do you set up the sensors up on the car? You, most of the time you put them on the, underneath your driver's seat, fr uh, seat rail. The they they would rail. like it near the center of the car as much as possible on a something solid and metal. But so the you, right front bolt of the seat is, you know, pretty close. So this is the only sensor, or are there other sensors? You could sensor. buy a four axis. If you notice in the, in the tool, you have three axis. You could also buy a four axis, which comes with another sensor, and you put it in the fourth hole. Oh, so you still have this box. You still have this box, okay. and it just has another one of these boxes with a single, and you put it, you add a sensor. So you can put this sensor in one spot, and you can put it in another spot to see if the frequency is more so on one side of the car than the other. Or you could do a recording uh, with just the, th the three axis on one side, and then move it to the other side and see if the frequency changes in amplitude. Now, a question I have. You mentioned the microphone. What yes. microphone? There's a microphone in the kit. It's attached. It's attachment. Okay, so it's an attachment, that's what I asked you before. So right. it's more than yes. just yes. this. Yes. yes. So you got a sound attachment. So technically, any micro, you know, you could take a micro, you know, the mics that come with a cheap computer that you never use, you could take one of those and glue a magnet to it, and, you know, it's got a little audio cable. You can make an adapter. It would still make a, a noise. Sure. And it would be, you know, cheap. Probably, and, you know, I have a box of them. This goes back to ultrasound. I don't mean how you, how many of you guys use ultrasound out there. I have a great tool that uh, from Ultraphonics. Even Bernie Thompson has one of those that you could hook to a lab scope, and it picks up sound waves. Actually, years back, before he came out with the pressure transducer in the exhaust pipe, we were using that to see if it was a mechanical problem. If it was an electrical problem, you know, meaning ignition-wise, or a fuel problem. The only thing is why they didn't go through with that. If someone changes the exhaust, remember, it's acoustics. Yeah, the whole if pattern change changes. The, exhaust, the whole pattern changes. But it worked well. I had a whole bunch of police cars to, to do it with all original exhaust. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. that's when Jim, you remember uh, Mr. Pickles' man, yeah. came in, and he had a 3800 at the time, and it didn't show up like everything else. And I was like... How come it doesn't show up the same? He had an aftermarket exhaust on it that changed the sound waves. This is a lot more accurate. And it's something that if you own a Pico scope, a lot of people out there do, um, it's something that you may want to purchase. So first of all, how much is a Pico scope? Because you bought one recently. Mine is an older version. Uh, it's about $1,600, $1,700, depending on your, your Okay, book. for a four-channel scope. Yep. And how much was this device? The six hundred dollars uh, for the kit, which comes with the that sensor and also the microphone. Now, how's the support been on that? Because you know, one of the big things with everything you buy a tool, especially if you're not familiar with it, uh, it's always good to work with someone. Like he's working with Pierre and uh, Bear. Now, uh, my guys are using it. We have a not a Pico setup. We'll get into that later. But we have John Kelly set up where the NVH is not only on my phone, but we have it on a tablet. And we can put it on up to five devices of the same kind. So whether it's a, a Windows, 
or a Android, Android or, or a iPhone. So. Now, from my experience with Pico, I have not had to call them yet because I'm on kind of learning stages now. I mean, I've learned a lot through the internet. And just to mention that John Kelly, I did before I bought this NVH software, I also purchased and talked to him personally with the um, with his app on his phone, which is awesome. But I just wanted to, that little more. Like every one of us technicians have a problem. We like to buy the best of the best. <laughs> yeah. Tool junkie. Yeah. And, <laughs> and John Kelly actually, you know, plug to him. He's from Weber State University out in Salt Lake City. So good plug. I was just chatting back and forth online uh, with him uh, via email uh, Sunday and actually yesterday. Um, his setup he did for some OE manufacturers. And I think... I think uh, his setup works pretty well so far. Well, I mean, I may purchase this, but so far I've seen real good results. Here's what we what we were testing it with Eric's before he bought this. We found that it was extremely sensitive to how you mounted it in the car. I was telling Bill earlier, you maybe you need some Velcro to, to stick it on the dash or stick it on the, you know, just to make it stable. Because that's the only way it's going to get vibrations that it can that it can give you a result. Yeah, you don't want it rocking around. Right. I had placed uh, this on the, the test one we have there in the cup holder where it was really tight. Yeah. Now you can buy the phone mount, which I have one around, that you can put on the window. Yeah. And now as long as it's not doing one, as long as it's not shaking, you're good. Right. The only problem I found with using that was you have a very small little sensor here that can mount to something very solid, very. Tight and it's the magnet, it is no joke. It's that's a strong, strong, that's a strong, strong magnet, magnet. Pull you into something, keep that away from here. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so so I found that it just it was a lot more sensitive using this than to use that. And it, don't get me wrong, I, from what I understand, John Kelly had a lot, a lot to produce the software for Pico, they were they were hand in hand. So, you know, that that is definitely. A great tool to use, especially if bang for the dollar. Yeah. His software, can I mention numbers? Yeah, yeah, sure. His software was $400 for the phone app. You already have your phone. It's in your hand. So you could automatically download the app. You own it for life as long as you have it on the phone. Right. And you could use it right away. This, I didn't have a Pico yet, so I was, I was like, do I buy a Pico? Do I buy this? But, you know. Now let's talk about the phone. It doesn't work on every phone. It's later versions because there were some things online where someone had, let's say, a Samsung 5 or an old and iPhone. And they didn't have any kind of a three-axis G-sensor in it, right. I guess. Right, so it needs a G-sensor in it. Yeah, three-axis G-sensor. Do we have any questions, Dory? I see you here. Uh, oh, so the question was, will this tool differentiate between a chassis vibration and a driveline vibration? I think it was that was. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, it, it'll, it uh, gives you engine three levels of harmonics, driveline, three levels of harmonics, and tire speed, you know, anything tire speed, three levels of harmonics. Pretty cool. Let's, all let's with, look at some of yeah. that there. I'm sorry. Okay. All with that sensor on the seat bolt. Yes, but okay. mounted exactly the right way every time. It's, it's got a front. Okay, it, okay it, but you know, you're not moving that to... No, the, no, it's, it's just getting the acceleration okay. from the vehicle. Gotcha. Let's look at some screenshots now, and Eric will uh, explain them. So you're, we're going to share our screen. Move the 330XI, where I've had a pretty good vibration in the, in the wheel. So I wanted to, I knew what the problem was, but I said, let, let me, let's see how good this tool will work. So I installed it, got everything hooked up, and went for a test drive. And this is my results. You, where, where you see then the bottom part of that screen where you see the, the black, hmm. harsh line. is your frequencies over time, just like a lap scope. You also have the blue and the red is RPM and engine speed. I think... Uh, so you're on the lower part of the graph here. We're talking yes. at the black. Yes. The black was and the frequency that is pretty consistent there. Is you got a red and a blue or what? Is RPM and engine speed. And road speed. Yes, road speed. Road speed. Okay. 
Now, well, what's the top green? I'm going to explain in a second. So if you look all the way to your, your whatever. The right. Yes. Where, where it's blue, blue. Where it's tinted. That is a capture and brought up on top of the screen in the bar graph. That's your little capture, the window, the whole window. Added up and, and shown in a bar graph. how much frequency is developed. So you look for the highest point in frequency, obviously, and you see the green bar all the way to the left, um, which is a T1. So you have T1, T2, and T3, the first three. That's tire uh, first order, second order, and third order. So one time per revolution, first order, two times per revolution, second order, and three times per revolution, three order, or third order. So obviously if you have a balance issue or a bent wheel, you would have, depending on the times it was bent in a circle, you would have first order, okay? And that's what it's bringing up here. And I know, obviously from having this car for quite a while, that the vibration is definitely a, vib is a wheel. Four square wheels. Yes. <laughs> we have four tires that are in this car. All right, let's stop there for a second. I wanted to add something. So where that blue sample is, you see the width of it. The, the first thing is, what does it take? It, it only records a minute at a time, and then it starts scrolling off the edge of the screen. Um, so so it takes a minute and then you're taking some amount of that. That blue shaded window is the least you can look at and analyze. You can analyze it with other stuff we're gonna talk about. But you could also spread it out so that you're over the whole sample, if you wanted to, the whole minute to get an average vibration. And I must add, when you're driving this car, you could actually ping a flag on your screen when you feel the vibration the most. Usually right. you'll see it in the frequency chart at the bottom because it'll be higher than normal. But you, if, you're, if you see the, the, the thick line, it's kind of hard to pick out some stuff. So that's why you have a little flag and you mark it as you go. And you could open up this little window where that flag is and you can look on the top screen where you're... you're and, and again, it's better if someone else... Well, so it. if you were to do this while you were driving, it would be difficult to do this and not drive into a telephone pole. What we were doing was Eric was driving and I was uh, working the computer. Excellent. That's yeah. yeah. It, it takes a minute and a half, so you you can just put your cursor yeah. on on stop as well and hit stop when you feel the vibration and flag it. It's it's a pretty it's a pretty easy tool to use once you understand the concept of it. So there's other formats of looking at this frequency, and that'll be the picture two. This is remember this is a three axis sensor. This does X, Y, and Z. So you have forward side and up and down it picks it up that's where you see the, the blue the red and the green so blue is your front and back uh the i believe the y is up and down the the, the red and uh, the green is side to side so if you have a balance problem you you'll see it right there in the red because you're going up and down the car's moving up and down not side to side or a bent wheel so if you had like a uh, depends on how severe it is. If you had a, a tire that has a blown or a ruptured uh, belt in it, it would move side to side a lot more, and you'll see it in, the, in that axis. I like the green the most because you instantly pick up what's causing your issue. Is it a tire, is it an engine, or is it a propeller shaft? So I just want to show there's different views of using this tool. Now there's also another view, which is the next one, which shows you in like a a graph format of over time. The furthest to you is what's happening right now, and the farther back is like what how much it's repeating. So you could. So do you mean on the upper left of the screen? Yes, upper left, and it also okay. pings at T1, T2, T3, so you can watch. That's the different colors. Yes. Yeah. yeah so colors. it's really showing every single vibration. Yeah. Every single movement. Now you're looking for nitty gritty stuff. In the problem. Yeah. Right. And then there's one more graph. This is the different colors. This is the amplitude of all of them, all three axes in that same format. 
but doesn't show you left or up and down, forward, back, and side to side. So this is still with the vehicle broken. Yeah. You have this one is actually with the all the same. Right, with, this is all the same file. Issue, yeah. Okay. Same data. It's the same, same data. exact data, just in different format. Okay. So some. Time in the future, if you get wheel sphere gone, yes, of course, you can see the difference. <laughs> I tried putting, I tried getting wheels; it didn't fit. Okay. <laughs> so the next one is a Ford Ranger that I have um, that gave me some problems, and I captured. That's an engine vibration capture. But it, this one actually has a, a propeller shaft. But at the time where I captured that window, I only had engine, and it wasn't very much of an engine problem. But it was just showing up on that screen. So again, let's explain to everyone out there: the frequency on the bottom, the black, the red is what the RPM. Uh, yeah, you read off the. I'm not even sure. I think it's RPM, and then the engine sp or road speed. Okay. Where, so red or blue is either RPM or yeah, right. far away from it. Yeah, I can't read. And it. the numbers in the box with the, all the writing. That is that, that is your freak. Yeah, that's, that's your frequency. Your, that's when it's happening. When it's happening at that time. Okay. okay. And your bar graphs up top. Yep. Obviously, you can see more towards a little right of the middle of the screen is an issue there in the red. Yes. Yes. All right, so that's just a, one, another way to look at it at a different, for a different problem. So if you, if you think you have an engine vibration problem, let's say you're looking for motor mount issues, you can actually put it on the, the body of your car and then take a capture of it and move it right away to your engine and see if the frequencies, how much different they are. Obviously, your engine mount should be doing, making a change, so the frequency about be a lot less if you're attached to the chassis, not the motor. It'd be cool if they had two sensors. They well, do. they do. That's yeah. the four-axis one. Yes. The optional. Uh, and Is so that long enough to put outside the car? Yeah, and actually, I, I actually told them that you could actually take the speaker cable and attach it for longer. Oh, yeah. Because they didn't have an adapter. I was asked, I asked that question to them. Actually, I asked Auto Nerds. And by the way, Auto Nerds is a good place to purchase... They, they do a lot of that their main source for Pico support that I found. So they um, sell the Pico scopes as they well? They sell the Pico scopes as well. So they're good because they're supporting their And the they product. have a whole website dedicated, and that's all they do is Pico. And so you have some very serious people with Pico knowledge and screenshots, you name it. There is a subscription to it too, but they have a, you know, once you start learning, you have a site. A yeah, and they're not the only seller of Pico no. in the country. It's there right. is, uh, boy, I forgot his name, out of the Chicago area. Um, boy, I can't think Well, AES right. Wave sells it, right. multiple. But the guy, he's the head guy in the U.S., is out of the Chicago area. He works with a lot of, uh, he works with like Thornton and all those guys, okay. and now I can't think of the other um, instructor that. Uh, he taught at Auto Mechanica. He's always doing the Pico stuff. Yeah, I know who that is. I can't think of his name. I'm, I'm always brain dead with names. I'm sorry. But so there's a couple of places to get it, uh, some good support there. Um, now, now, in this case, if you look at that bar graph, because uh, this truck, it has a, a big, uh, that's an engine vibration on the right, right? Yes. No, but it also has a propeller shaft vibration, which doesn't show up in this too much, in this Sample again. The sample you're looking at on the bar graph is only what's blue shaded down below. Yes. You can move that al al along the data stream and analyze any bit of that data. A wide swath of it. That that is about as narrow as it'll let you get. But then you can make it wider. You can take more data. You could capture. And it'll average it. You can capture okay, the whole so screen. Yeah. Let's, let's say that little box that is left of the middle. Yeah. You could open that up wide. You could open that up, and then the bar graphs or any of the data you look at would, would have that much more information. Well, it, it adds it up to the other. It averages So it. go to the next screenshot. That's another format. If you notice, it's in a different location, the blue. Right, that was where there was a real peaky thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the next one. And what's the top graph? Go back right. one. What's the top graph showing you? Mm -hmm. That is 3D. That's all the three axes. All individually, every single hit. 
every little thing, vibration. But it looks like, like more than multiple colors. Yeah, well, because colors. they're they're drawing boxes around. Um, they're shading certain features. All right, go that. back one, please. That is that. Blown up. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Blown up with all the detail. It's just a different format to look at. Some people like it like that. Some people like it bar graph. Some people like it, you know, all added up. I really there. like that one right there. That's yeah. my favorite. That's the most technical. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you go to the next one, it must be the It's got to be the quick one making the money, the bar graph. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's, right. that's why I like it. And this is also another good one because it, it puts them all yeah. online. <laughs> right. and you can obviously nice. see T1, T2, you know, I can't And it flags it. it. Yeah. So it, it becomes very critical that you have the right final drive ratio, the right tire size. If you mislabel those, it might be off. You know, it might not put the flag in the right place. So I recently had a so Toyota a few all days, days you ago. You have to put that. Uh, Toyota Tacoma a few days ago. With it, I asked the customer, "How do you like his? How do you like your Tacoma?" Thinking that he would say, "I love this truck." Well, he said to me, "He hated the truck." And I go, "Why?" He goes, "I had a vibration with this car pretty much since it's been new, and nobody could fix it." So I knew I was going to be doing this segment tonight, and I, and I said to myself, "Do I let this customer go, or do I get gather gather some information to see if I could turn this guy in a different different direction?" We'll come to find out. I didn't capture that. I didn't put it on the screen, but it ended up being a tire problem. Well, this person now is is um, really considering his decision to, to sell this truck to just, and just put another set of tires on it. So, um, yeah, this is a tool like this, and I actually showed him how it worked, and all my guys was very impressed with it, and he had no idea that this something like this was out there. So to any technician that's, that's looking for a direction of going, is it this or is it that, and you want to know for sure? Well, let me tell you, this has changed my whole perspective about how to diagnose a vibration problem, which most people are like, I don't need a tool like that. Well, I'll tell you what, you need a tool like this. Me and Pierre have been doing some, you know, a little bit of studying, and we were both like looking at each other like, wow. You know, so, um, so and then we have John Kelly's uh, tool, which I've used and G's been using recently, so I'm going to let him explain that. Yeah, we'll go on that with a second. We're going to look for some uh, questions. So you may be hearing little noises because our batteries and our microphones had a little uh, issue, yeah. and we're switching them around here. So just so you know, if you hear a little rustling around or whatever, that's we. That's if, you think of, if, you think, if you think about the purchase, really, you know how much how many hours can you spend trying to replace this, an axle, for say, a tire. Uh, you know, and having a dry face shot. when it doesn't fix it. There's right. a good. There's also, if you want to look on the internet for YouTube, there's a Scott Brown does a very, very good case study uh, using this tool about a problem that multiple places could not fix, and the, he fixed it with this tool. And he, it's it's a it's a two watch video. Yeah, it's one of it's one of the reasons why I bought this and, as well. And by the way, it was brand new to him at the time. I think he yes. mentioned he had just gotten yeah. it. Um, so he was still learning himself, and he was very impressed with how well it led him to the, you know, not to the exact problem, but to the... The direction, yeah. To, to the, the area. area. Yeah. And then I'll give a plug there for Scott Brown at mechanics.net is a uh, good website to check out if you're not a member of. Any questions up there, Doreen, before we move on with the John Kelly stuff? It says don't hit any road bumps while you're testing, right? Oh, you'll see uh, it. Well, you could well, you'll, you'll, you can do it. Shake. That's why it's noise, vibration, harshness. <laughs> well, are, you, are you doing this on a test lift? No, this, is, this is on the road. Yeah, this is on the road. road. And the best practice is, as far as I'm concerned, is to get the customer in the car driving. You use a tool, and you, you don't even say a word, and just say, tell me when you feel a vibration, you flag that problem at the time it happens. That, that's a very good way to do it. Excellent. Another question, Dory? So the red bar is showing most vibration? Correct, yes. In that case, but so it's it's the different axes. So it's it's forward and back is one axis, up and down is one axis, and side to side is the other axis. So those three bars involve the axes. So what Eric was saying is when it, the red bar was high because it was a tire going up and down. 
So shaking you, the car. If you had a bent wheel and it was shaking the car left and right, you would you would see that different bar graph go higher than the other one. Yeah. It just gives you a clue of where to where to go. Because I'll tell you, I mean, you could do all kinds of. Yeah, no, it's definitely a good diagnostic tool, especially you know vibrations will drive you crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the other neat things I don't know if this does it, but with the John Kelly tool, and during maybe you can just kind of go in. We'll just show them this right here. So, you know, here's just the cell phone, and the app on the cell phone, which i got to turn around here, would come up and disagree. basically uh, yeah, it's a little hard to tell you that. And you would have this screen come up, okay? So now let's look at some screens that I did something on purpose for a comparison. Uh, if you have a drive shaft issue, by the way, you can put this on the drive shaft and actually see the angles. Yes, it does do that. Now, I don't know if that does, does it? There is an, an add-on add for add on. it. Okay. So this is pretty cool. So can we uh, go to share screen? Not only your axle tells you, you want to look at your axle, just know that. you look at your axle angle, and you also look at your flange angle. Yeah, it's and drive your, shaft, right. Yeah, well, no, the, the, the angles of your transmission and your drive shaft, or your, your, your differential got to be the same. If one's pitched up, another one's pitched, you know, pitched in the wrong angle, you will get a vibration through the drive shaft. So that's your angle of your drive shaft you have to concern yourself with. Right. You have to concern yourself with the angles of both. Because you get a lot of four-wheel drive trucks, and they'll jack the thing up to wherever. Yeah. And, and guess what? Now your angle's changing. That, that drive shaft starts you know, oscillating. So that's never changed where people jack the cars. You know, something basic that should be in a shop, right, Bear? Right. And people don't know where sometimes to put the lift pads. We've all seen, you know, sides of cars bent or Damaged. underneath or floors up high. Floor pipes underneath. So at any rate, let's look at this screenshot right here. And you'll notice it's at zero miles an hour. It gives you a picture of the car. This is the John Kelly software, the NVH. Again, noise, vibration, harshness. And uh, let's go to the next screen. So right now you can see there is a bit of a drive shaft issue. This is on an all-wheel drive vehicle. Um, actually a 2017 XT5 Caddy and you can see that drive line right there in red okay not the engine in this one and it's picking up the frequency now the reason why I put it on uh, on this car is because I do feel a little harshness and believe it or not when the car was new <laughs> the rear differential went and I'm sure they didn't phase the actual drive shaft. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Oops. So, you know, they think you can live with a little bit of vibration. So, um, let's go to the next one. So, here we can see um, again, it's still in the drive shaft. The frequency changed a little bit. Next one. Shot. And now you can see that the vehicle speed is about 34 miles an hour, and I'm looking at a different view, a bar graph. And you can replay this movie. It's pretty nice. You can play it back on your phone. Uh, for the $400, what he gives you is you can put this on with your own account, that is, up to five devices of the same kind. So five Androids, if you have five Androids, this is steel. Yeah. Okay. If you have five apples, you got five windows, all good. So we have it on a couple of tablets and on my phone. So if I'm on the road somewhere, I can at least utilize it. And this bar here, you could see there's some problem, but it's not totally added away or added a range where it's going to be super bad yet. No. This works completely off your phone. There's yes. no sensor. There's no the sensor. The sensor is the, phone. It's the sensor is so, now that brings up the point that Eric and um, yeah. Pierre said before, 
You want to make sure this is stable. You don't want to just throw it down in a car that's going to bounce all over. No, that's not good. They should either be placed the way I think John says, placed in one of the holders that you can put on the windshield. If you place it good in a cup holder, you know, if it's a tight fit, it, or you hold it with your finger there. Right. But you can't move it. Okay, you, can't, you can't put it on your car seat. No, you car no. seat, you got to <laughs> And you can't, and if you have one of those mounts that goes in like a, a vent, mm -hmm. I think that might shake too much, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's got to be, a, it's got to be on a window similar yeah. to, I guess, a GPS unit. Yeah, yeah, suction mount, the real right. strong one. A real strong one. You don't want a problem. Next uh, screenshot, Dorian. So here we see it just changed a little bit different there. The frequency uh, and the speed changed a bit. And the next one. So now you see a red coming up. So now we're at 53.9 miles an hour. Okay. So you can see something different happened here on a different axis. So one may have been for a different problem. I can't see that far away. It's probably T3. It's probably, this is T3, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a tire it's thing. T3. Yeah, so this was definitely a tire thing. And it's nice to know that, hey, I got a tire out of balance. It's giving me that little shake in the seat. Next screen. So now here you can see with the frequencies on X, Y, and Z axis, the speed, and you can see where it's pulling up the frequency difference. So it really is pretty nice. That's your amplitude in the number format. Correct. And the next screen, Dorian? So now look how bad this is here at 53 miles an hour. And you did you did you mimic, mimic this problem? Did you make this problem? I made this problem. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> I made this problem. So a T2, that's a dry, that's a tire balance yeah. issue, but is second that, order. Is there weights on it? I, yeah, yeah. I, made, I made a little <laughs> issue there because I wanted to see if it's going to pick it up. Yeah, and me it too. We've it done, I've done this as well, and it's it's worked. It's amazing. And the reason why I wanted to do it, I want to see a comparison before I put it on a bad car. Yeah. I want to see a good car. And we should say the database goes from 1996 and up. And I do have the little thing that's going to go in. It's a Bluetooth device. I forgot the name of the company, but it's one that John Kelly recommends for the it's actual a, a RPM. Kiwi. Right. It's the I same idea. It. But I got to tell you, the RPM on my vehicle and on the phone was Pretty right close. on the money. Yeah, you can right do a manual money. or that. I, I use a Kiwi and it, you know, it, it's, it works. Maybe better. So you can see a big problem here. Let's move to the next slide. You can see there again, just a different frequency. Something else happened on the bottom there. And one more. Now, here's the That's nice the thing. Yeah. This is what I really like. You could diagnose it. So you'll go, I don't know what this crap is. Who knows? This is just a bunch of mumbo jumbo. There's a problem, but where's the problem? Yeah. You could hit the diagnose button, hit the next screen. And check this out. It's a tutorial that John Kelly has put together and very well done. Uh, also, I'd highly recommend you read his Motor Age article, <coughs> excuse me, I think it was last month or the month before. Mm -hmm. And I told him he did an excellent job on the article, is really what pushed me to get this, because I was just going to get the Pico thing. And I said, you know what, I'm going to hold off and get this and see how my guys use it in the shop if it's going to make us money. You know, you could buy toys, but you want return on investment and you want results. This is pretty easy for a customer to see. And it's you know, accurate. It's accurate. You can take a screenshot right on your phone, email it to them, which I really like, where I don't know if you can do that, not knocking the Pico stuff, 
But this is very simple where a customer, I think, can grasp it by reading this themselves. Yes, keep you it can simple. do it with Pico, but it's a multi-stage thing. We were doing it for those uh, JPEGs we sent you. You have to use a snipping tool, you have to snip it, put it, you know, in paint. How about whatever. if you use Dropbox on it? You know, there may be something where you just hit Dropbox print screen and you can get it in We there. couldn't print screen out of the, the software. The, the scope software wouldn't let us print screen. We tried There's that first. software you use any uh, capture. It, it'll work because I have my Pico scope. I do print screen. I'll have to show you. Use Dropbox. Okay. Dropbox for you guys out there. Look it up. Dropbox is a little thing where you can share files with people. And send big files. And just hit, work. you know, if you have a function key that works with print screen, you may have to hit both of them. You got a computer that just has print screen, then you'll only have to do that. Let's see if there's any questions. Um, in the interim, while Dorian is switching back, I must say that um, this is pretty damn impressive, especially you know, for the price, especially for the price. So Doreen's looking for some questions there or comments. Um, I think, in my opinion, this is a great way to get started. You know, it's not a huge investment. You can use your phone. You can use a tablet. If you come, hell, if you come to our uh, TST big event, we're giving away tablets again, new tablets, uh, in March the 30th, 2019. So we'll give a plug for the TST big event. We gave away tablets last year as well. Anyway, enough of the commercial. Let's see if there's a question. Uh, where do you get the Android app? Okay, so Android app, go to the Google Play Store, type in NVH, and it'll come up. Um, it is $3.99 plus tax. You can download it pretty much immediately. Yeah. And again, up to five devices of your own. As long as they're the same platform. They've got to be the same platform. Very good. So, again, Google... Uh, the Android, Google stuff, um, yeah, Windows, or, Windows or, Apple. or Apple. Any other questions? Uh, can this point out axle vibrations? Yes. It does axle, drive shaft, um, tires. It doesn't tell uh, you. An engine. It doesn't, doesn't tell you exactly what it is. It tells you what frequency. Area. Yeah, so yeah. you put in tire size and final drive ratios, and it and it knows what those speeds are, so it then flags a T1, T2, whatever, if it's something that's spinning the same speed, speed. as your wheel. So it's could be an axle, you know, half shaft or a hub yeah. or a wheel bearing or a tire wheel, whatever. That speed. Right. You know, the, the good thing is, again, practice like I did here on something good, then make it bad. That way you can compare it. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you only practice on all good cars or all bad cars, you need really to see the difference before and after. And we know some customers don't. I'm going to be using it on that Corvette that's there. The guy has a vibration. It's a 1995. Five. Uh, unfortunately, it's not in the database. 96 and up is. But he allows you to put it in. You can go by the tear sheet. So I found the differential to gear ratio. Two different tire sizes, which he allows you yeah. to put in. And tire sizes, make sure that you really look because that's going to throw everything off. And again, he was a big part of the Pico software. Uh, you know, they, we worked together with them to, to get that uh, software. What I was going to say is even if you get something like this and the first vehicle you get coming in, you haven't played with it yet, you put it on a vehicle, you figure out it's something in the drive line. you know, you got a, a sticky yoke or something, after you fix it, do it again so you have a good and a bad on the same Very. vehicle. For one thing, there's nothing better for selling that to customers. You're not just giving them a seat of the pants. You're actually showing them a printout of what, you know, this is what it is. It's so important to do that. You know, even years back, just with lab scopes or anything, anything that you could take a picture of or print is really worth its weight in gold. Pictures uh, worth a thousand words? Yeah, it really is. So you should do that. And um, I think this is helpful for the industry. Let's go back to Sharon's screen since there's no more questions. Go over a few more and then we can kind of wrap this up. While she's switching there, we'll tell you next Wednesday night there'll be a live free webcast from us. Uh, and CPS will be doing R1234YF only air condition. We'll uh, explain and go through the whole steps because at some point, with uh, approximately 78% of the cars on new car dealers' um, 
parking, parking lots. lots. Thank you. Uh, they're all 1234 YF. So if you haven't been seeing them in your shop, you will because they've been out for years as well. So we'll go over the do's, the don'ts um, right now. Um, stay tuned. Uh, hook up next week, 8 o'clock next Wednesday night. So this screen here is the tutorial. Go to the next screen, Dorian. Here is the vibration. You can see drive shaft. I can't see what the first one says. Here's the account. Uh, speed related vibrations, counts in order. Drive shaft, engine, you can see there, just some of the bars. Go to the next one. And there you can see just the continuation of the screens and the counts. And I like that it even, I believe the time stamps it, right? Or date stamps it. Yeah, the, top it the top of it does. So it's really nice with all the counts on it. And again, you can do a comparison. Next screen, Dorian. So here I did a comparison of two different things that I did with it. Now that's really good. Because let's say this is a before and after. You could really prove to the customer you did it. And, you know, we were talking before the webcast, what are you going to charge, I said to Eric, for using this? And he said about an hour and a half. And that's probably good because, you know, time is money. you got to set it up. you got a half hour set up. Okay. Well, with this, it's not a half hour no. set up. Okay, but I do need to take another guy out. There. I wouldn't say that because by the time you find your data, you need to put it into that tool. You're getting ratios, you're getting tires, you're getting uh, gear ratios. Well, most of it he has in there on the newer car. Yeah, okay. 96 and newer, it's in there. Older cars, you got to get the yeah. Just by the model or whatnot, yeah. you get the... Or yeah, like we had a Jeep need. we're going to do. Yeah, uh, I did BMW and a uh, Mercedes, and it wasn't, a, you know, yeah. you, have to, you have to look it up. Sometime. You have to look it up. So some of them, but I'd say majority of the cars that most people work on, they're going to be in there 96 and newer. If not, you're going to have to look for tear sheets. You're going to have to do a little extra work. All that out specs, or you go, use Google it, and believe it or not, there's a lot of information from there on there. Exactly. That's where, you know, even today I was showing the guys on the Jeep that is a 2004 that came in with a problem, and I had a vibration from a sticky caliper. <laughs> the caliper was sticking, but it was a 10-bolt rear, you know, a Dana. And I said, look, watch, just talk into the phone, and you come up yeah, with a whole bunch yeah, of different yeah. specs. So it's pretty good. So this comparison thing I think could be real good for you and your shop is why we decided to do this, thanks to Eric and uh, uh, Pierre. And, of course, um, when we did see this, I forgot the guy from Pico's name that originally put this on. Uh, Matt Fonslow, he wasn't the guy that puts it on, but... Fonslow. Fonslow uh, does a lot with Pico, and yes. he works with the guys out of the Chicago area. So uh, you may want to look at uh, some of the stuff that maybe he's done. Next screen, Dory. So there, you know, there's a drive shaft vibration. It's telling you the whole thing. It's telling you how to use the tool. It and shows. I think it's, it's pretty simple. You know, if I get to the point where I think this is not giving me, I'm not zoning in good enough, I'll spend the extra money because I have a Pico scope already and do it. But I would think if this is going to be faster and easier rather than me taking a laptop out, a scope out, you know, or a tablet, more crap to break in the vehicle. Yeah. This way all I have is either a tablet or a phone, plus crap to break. Now, as far as accuracy, I would really have to say we would have to match them up. That's my next step. And, you know, do side by side and see how close they are. If it's really, you know, just a hair better, it's you know, still, it's still, for the buck, you it still it. sets you in that direction. That's, in, that's for most technicians, yeah. he is the direction yeah. to go in. Next slide, if there's one, Doreen. So there's just more stuff there with T1, summary. T2 summary on tire stuff. And again, you can see he did a great job. Go look at some of his videos again, John Kelly. He's got a lot uh, of the good ones. At uh, 
Weber State University out there in Utah. And the next screen, I think, is going to be the last one. Oh, that's, it. that's it. So you can get us back here. Um, you know, we're not here selling someone's uh, someone's software, but um, but that's what we're using. Uh, there are other NVH kits out there, right? Other yeah. manufacturers make stuff. We just haven't used it. Yeah, I'm not sure how good they are or not. I don't think but, there's um, too many. Hmm? Yeah. I don't think there's too many besides well, I know Adam and, uh, had bought something. Yeah, that's an older version of an EV2, I think it was. Oh, is that what that yeah. is? Yeah. That's um, Vtronics. You used to sell it, but they don't have they right. Don't have right. Right. Just By anymore. the way, these things have been out a long time. Let's talk about that. In fact, go read that John Kelly article, and you'll see he has one that SPX yeah. had made, which is on an old Monitor 2000 platform. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and this goes way back That's because a long time ago. dealers were using this stuff for quite some time. You know, I remember um, they were talking about coming out with this when I worked in the dealership, but that's like a gazillion years ago. But um, Back in the dark ages. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's out there. There's different stuff. Vitronics obviously had it out and a few other companies. But right now it seems to be John Kelly stuff here and uh, the Pico stuff. And again, you make the decision, okay, and decide what works for you because that's the important thing. So, Doreen, are there any more comments? Hopefully you guys picked up a few things here. Uh, just opinions, you know, we're new at it as well. Maybe some of you have used this and can give us some pointers. Yeah. It's all about helping each other. I definitely suggest go on YouTube and look at John Kelly's videos. Uh, they are very, very good, and it gives you a lot of information, an insight of NVH that you, you need to spend some time with. Yeah, perhaps maybe we can uh, chat with John. I told him we'd be mentioning him tonight, but maybe we can... Uh, get uh, John online um, that way um, I mean he knows way more than us that's for damn sure yeah and there's some people who have been using this a lot uh, for for years and have this down to a fine art um, as Jerry said we're kind of new to this we're excited about it because it's a new thing for us you know, when you see manufacturers like Mercedes and uh, I think it was Acura Honda were there in the class, in the class they're the engineers. Engineers, they're engineers, and the reason why they're there is they've already been using the software. But is when they're buying, they have to buy back cars, and a lot of them are just because of a vibration problem that nobody could fix. So they're they're giving they're giving people money back for sixty to one hundred thousand dollars cars for a vibration issue, and this is how they're finding them. Yeah. So you know, to talk to these people, it's it's just overwhelming what what they could teach you as well by going to these classes. So yeah, that's why it's a good idea to go every class you go to. I know, by the way, I give a plug to Napa. Napa has some NVH classes coming up. Um, I have not totally seen it, but um, if you're in Napa Auto Care, I know they're coming up uh, in this area. Mm, I believe in August, um, and, and around where you guys are. You may have had it already, but it was one of their classes for 2018. I'm sure there's some good information in it with a lot of noise, vibration, and harshness uh, information. I think it's going to be more more on the cutting edge of, of, of diagnosis because these cars are getting smoother and smoother, and people are going to complain more and more. So I think it's a, a it's almost a two-have tool now. Yeah, yeah, you think about it. It's not just that the cars are smoother. We're running bigger and bigger rim sizes with smaller and smaller tires. Mm. The leverage for any problem to create a vibration that you're going to feel is greater. Um, you know, these double rubber isolated suspension systems and all that, it, it all, you, they're, all gonna, they're all going to notice things that they wouldn't have noticed in previous generations. Yeah. yeah, no doubt. And, you know, on my car, the XT5 that I said had the differential problem, I had complained to the dealer multiple times they did not use that tool but the vibration got so bad <laughs> you didn't need a tool well, that's because it's okay but if they would have put it on there right away or if i had my tool i could have said look i have a drivetrain issue right here that is the nice thing about having this you can confirm you know your customer's concern right and you can back up your work uh what you need to charge or what you um need to to tell them has to be repaired. 
it comes down to confidence. You get confidence in using a tool like this and fixing a car. You could charge whatever you really want. <laughs> so, so I think we beat this horse to pretty much the end. Um, if you guys have any comments or anything you'd like to see us cover, um, we got to get back to doing some scan tool shootouts, uh, a OE tool versus the aftermarket tool. I think we're on for like a BMW one or something soon. Um, or a GM, I don't even remember where we left off. But let us know what you would like us to do. And again, don't forget next Wednesday night at 8 o'clock, same time, please follow the information in your email. Do not put your camera on, okay? Do not uh, put your sound on. It's just a big hassle for us on our end until they can just leave those all off. Um, we want to thank you for coming out, Pierre. Yes, thank you. I think that's it. Um, obviously, if there's any uh, additional comments before we sign off, just type them in pretty quick. Um, and if you come up with interesting subjects for a roundtable, not like when we're specialized in air conditioning next week, but something where we have a real open discussion roundtable, write them down so uh, you can ask about them, we can talk about them. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Roundtable is getting out there and uh, pretty much what's ever on your mind. Oh, which reminds me, uh, Calm Caprietto, Remarkable Results, has a new program where you'll hear me rant. Uh, it's a new thing. I forgot the name of the show other than uh, what I just told you, Remarkable Results. But it's a new thing where he's getting people ranting about different stuff. And that's really what we have here and we've done in the past. So if you've got an issue, something that's bothering you in a shop, um, different tools will be coming up with... Uh, I was showing these guys before, or telling them, and Bill was showing them, a, on a 745 N62 motor that had air ports clogged. I get a plug out there for AGA tools out in California. Martin makes some unbelievable tools, saved loads of hours cleaning those ports out with a special tool. This is that idiotic, I mean, wonderful engineering design. Of BMW. That where they put the secondary air ports like this through the cylinder head so it can coke up with carbon and be impossible to clean. The factory solution is to take the heads off, and which is a nightmare so job on this car. Cool. And this kit makes it so you can do it by taking the exhaust manifolds off and, and working in the car. Still not a five-minute job, no, but, but, you know, it's saving the labor. You're not pulling yeah, heads. It's hour <laughs> and a half labor. And, a lot right. of time, uh, and it goes from the top where you clean the top part of the ports that come down, and then in the head, it's like a hook thing. Uh, I'll be writing an article or something on that down the road, so you'll see that. Oh, Doreen says question time or yeah, comment. It appears that you covered vibrations with the two different tools, tools avail available. What about the noise, squeaks, etc.? So that's the microphone. Yes. So the question was, we've covered vibrations, what about the noises? So there's a microphone that comes with this kit. And uh, as I said earlier, you could get any microphone from a computer and glue a magnet to it, epoxy a magnet to it, uh, or a clamp if you wanted to use an alligator clip for some application, yeah, just and just put a put a you know an adapter from a from a phono plug to a BNC, um, and you could hook it up to the fourth channel. And then what you're doing is you're you're getting your vibrations in your three channels, and then. If the vib if the sound lines up with a vibration, then you know which category it's in: engine, uh, prop shaft, you know, drive line or wheel speed. It's also a good way I look at it too. Is when when I when I've played with the microphones, I really even use it for diagnosis. But if you ever watch CSI and all those uh, you know log you know yeah. TV shows where you watch them forensic actually stuff. look at the the voice recordings and they have the amplitude little waveform, just like we saw in there with the frequency. It's the same thing. The closer you get to that frequency, the higher the amplitude is going to be. So you use oh. a microphone in a direction where you think the noise is, and if it, if it increases in frequency, you know you've got the direction, yeah. and been, you keep bringing it closer. I've been using chassis here. Yeah. I like the old one with the wires more than the one with the radio transmitters. Yeah, yeah. I got both. I, do and, and I, I, the wires better. I think the wire is, first of all, it's, it's a kind of a lighter unit, and secondly, um, I think the sound quality is better, right? A little, so, but pick it up. See, yeah. But anyway, the bottom line is, I've been using those for years. I mean, I've worn out a couple of sets, 
and they're great, but they don't allow you to do the kind of analysis you can do with it with your phone or with a scope. Yeah, see you. Yeah, yeah, you can hear a noise and you know whether it's loud or someplace, but you can't fine tune that like you can with these things. But you can't collect the data that yeah, one thing you can, as I was mentioning before, with ultrasound. You can do that. I even did an air condition problem. So this thing had a leak years back, and this is before you know um, Bernie's, Bernie's uh, tool with the bullseye. Uh, bullseye stuff. But you know, no dye came out, and it was on a real tough um, evaporator. So what I did is I used ultrasound, and because it was such a small leak, I heard something. But to make sure. The bar graph was moving. I connected it in, the model I have, connects to a lab scope, and basically it was like graphing it. Then when I recovered the refrigerant, it flatlined it. Put refrigerant back in, went so you know there was a leak. So you could do the same thing with wind noise. That's what ultrasound is also good for. Now there's some good units and there's some garbage units. I have one garbage unit that some company sent me, we won't mention, and I have a very good unit, okay? And I gotta tell you, if you have a wind noise or rattle noise, you move that. Again, someone else has to be driving, and you could find it that way as well. Probably te better technically, a those chassis air microphones have a, they only have a two connector, you know, a, a positive and a ground. Right. So in order to put it into, say, the ATS scope or to put it into these with a BNC connector, you would have to adapt. But you could technically take sounds and add them on from other equipment you might have. That's yeah, well. you know, think out of the box. If you have, some guys have ultrasound. I mean, you know, uh, White Industries for years was selling ultrasound for about 550 bucks. I have one of those kits, which is a very, very good one. The more expensive one gets into the thousands of dollars range. I think it's like 3,500. I used to find EVAP leaks like that as well. And it was a real good setup. And those are tough, aren't they? EVAP leaks are the toughest. They're tough. Well, by the way, we'll be doing it. Give a pluck. See, I'm always thinking of these things. Motor Age. This one's a paid-for-one coming up. I think it's the third Saturday um, August. of August. Pete Meyer, myself, Pierre, uh, will be doing EVAP, uh, live, live demonstration with an EVAP board so you can actually see what's going on, uh, using smoke machine, using bullseye, using ultrasound. So we'll show you what really works and what doesn't work. So again, uh, for TST, if there's no further questions, right, Doreen, we're all good? No questions. We want to thank you. It's good information. Uh, thank you, guys. We couldn't do it. And gals, without you out there, thank you, Doreen. Thank you, Mr. Bear, Pierre, and Eric for uh, making this thing possible. Have a great night. See you next week. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, thank you gang.